Welcome back to the Land of Woodwright Studio. I'm going to make a Chris Kinnear, and this video is going to be on tools. I've had quite a bit of email about it, so I'm going to try to answer all the questions. I'll start off with the big stuff and work my way uh, through the details to the little stuff. Now to start off with, of course, the first of all I mentioned is a good solid bench. Um, after all, you're going to be pounding on some pretty big wood with um, some pretty big chisels. And uh, it helps to have something that's solid. Now this thing is made out of two by sixes. It's not necessarily to get quite that robust, but uh, at least some two by fours. And brace it well, and uh, hopefully it won't wiggle around too much on you. The next thing, of course, is some light. There is no such thing as having too much light. And one of the important parts is the, the, the um, uh, it goes by Kelvin scale. What you want is something way up in the blue range. Now this is a very harsh light. The idea being that you can see everything. Um, it's not a, a very, uh, it's not going to make your work look very nice. The idea is if you can get it to look nice in this harsh blue light when you take it out in the sunshine, it's really going to be pretty. Uh, so you look for the highest K value, it's actually Kelvin scale. Not quite sure why they use it, but that's what they do. Um, the next thing is, of course, is some peace and quiet. Um, if you always have the dog running through and kids and the neighbors bothering you, well, it interrupts, it interrupts your concentration, so you need to find some place that's a little quiet. Okay. Now for some of the tools of the trade. As you can see here, this is maybe an unusual looking vice arrangement I have here. Um, there's actually some method to my madness. This one down, at, I have two, actually two different levels of um, things to hold here. Then there's pretty good reason behind it. The one down here is on a low, and when you have something down um, at this level towards your hips you have a lot of power not so much finesse but if you're using a plane um, big chisels odds and ends like that then you've got a um, uh, it's much easier to do it rather than trying to you know pound up here where you don't have the the physical strength you can only use your arms down here you can use your body now this <coughs> odd arrangement I believe it's made by Wheeler Engineering um, and it's called a pattern maker's vise. And after you get to the point where you've got some shape to your stock, or you want it up a little higher, then this thing works out. And as you can see, these rotate, and whatever shape your stock is in, it works very nicely. And uh, you just kind of tighten it up. And also this has the advantage of being able to swivel. So as you're working one way and you need something that's a little more comfortable, instead of you trying to stand on top of your vise or on top of your bench, move the vise. This is called blacksmith's vise. It's not particularly great for wood, but every once in a while you do have to um, shape scrapers, and I will go over how to make one. Uh, and just they need to shape odds and ends. So you can beat on this. Um, it works as a heat sink, you name it, but they sure are mighty handy. Okay, the first tool, uh, we'll go into some detail, of course, is a plane. Uh, when you get a, your stock blank, it'll look something like this. And let me... For this kind of uh, use and abuse, of course, I would be using the other vise down here. but that's kind of difficult for the camera to see, so we're going to hold it up here. As you can see, they, they do come in a variety of sizes. These are a couple here, and then you also have these. And then um, they also sell something like this for shoulders. Uh, this is not particularly used for stock making. Um, but if you ever have to make a box for a shotgun or a pistol, uh, something like this comes in handy. Now I do have Lee Nielsen tools. Um, these are expensive. Um, if you have somewhat of a limited budget, uh, this is not really the way to go. They're um, very expensive. But they do make lots of, um, oh, in the $100 range. And these can all be gone. I would 
let me back up and say don't go to your big box hardware store um, rather than um, say any names I'll just leave it to your imagination instead go to the woodworkers um, woodcrafters uh, look online for the larger woodworkers um, equipment if they sell things like Lee um, Nelson um, Veritas us and things like that then um, they'll sell you the um, the planes that I'm talking about um, by the way this also is a plane and I'll get to this in a minute it's called so called a spoke shave now one of the things you'll notice about these some have a knob in the front and <clears throat> some of these don't this is kind of an interesting accident um, I dropped one actually both of these and broke them off and I found out the way I use a plane it does make life a little easier and I suppose I should explain myself when you're going along and using your plane you very often have your hand let me see if I can switch sides here when you're going along you quite often will hold the finger over on this side as you're going along and this gets in the way so without the knob there of course this I don't have that problem anymore and I can feel exactly um, what kind of an edge I'm holding now one big thing about all of the planes that um, are out there you have to do some tuning what I mean by tuning is the bottom of these are never quite flat uh, you'll have to take some time to stone them um, if you can find a flat surface put some sandpaper on it pull the blade back out of the way first and uh, run it back and forth and see where the scratch patterns are one of the things you have to make sure is you have the frog on it uh, because it does pull and stress the frame of your plane and it will make a difference after you get that then I'll also go into sharpening in a little bit um, have some thoughts on that I that well I'm probably won't make any friends in the um, resale world but it hopefully it will be of some interest okay now to continue on with planes I've got a couple laid out here this is what they call a joiner plane very long and it does the same job as the planers you probably have in your shop these oh, they're really not necessary they, they certainly are nice if you have them um, I have you can see the amount of dust on this one how much it gets used uh, it's a lot of trouble to keep the thing tuned it's not it doesn't have the beefy construction of this one um, and also let's face it as you can see the shape of this blank uh, it kind of hangs over the edges there's a lot of work and effort to push this through the wood so I don't use this one quite so much so let me set this one aside however I do use these a considerable amount now part of the thing of setting all these up is you really want a very thin shave uh, and when I get to polish pointing out how to polish um, and sharpen these blades uh, it's the same way I do the chisels when we get to the chisels I'll go into more detail about it one of the things you want to do of course is to get an even curl from one side to the other and rather than set it on your piece and experiment and find out you're gouging one side versus the other side just get yourself a skinny piece of wood go down one side Go down the other side and compare the, the chips that you have here. If they're both the same, then you're good to go. If not, there's a lever back here and push it always towards the high side. Try it again. And I had this actually sticking out a little too far. And they're the same. Even though they kind of broke up, olive wood is a little brittle. Now the when you first start of course you're going to want to remove a lot of material it takes a lot of muscle and if you haven't been doing it a lot it'll take 10 or 15 minutes and you're sitting there panting and breathing hard and your arms are shaking and boy that's a lot of work exhaustion 
Well, there's a couple of things that can help. One is the candle. Paraffin actually makes a very good lubricant. Just go back and forth. And I wouldn't use beeswax. It has a habit of gumming things up. Paraffin actually works better in this application. But you, now you can try it and you'll find out it slides them much easier. And of course I'm going against the grain, which doesn't make life any easier. So we need to back this off a little bit so I'm not chattering. Okay, there we go. Now one of the things when you're really cutting off a lot of wood to help um, with the effort, especially when you're trying to um, remove some wood, is actually you want to throw as if you're throwing away the plane. Um, it just lines up all the muscles and you get the inertia initially and you want to start with the blade on the outside of the wood so it hits the edge and if you're going forward you can throw it away. <clears throat> and that's probably some of the worst grain to work with and you can see it's starting to get shiny. And that's about what you want to do. Now why am I doing this? Well, you need to square up your stock um, to give yourself some reference points. It doesn't have to be super critical. If you have a tiny amount of light showing on one edge or the other of your square, and I'll go over that in just a moment, what a square is, a, that's perfectly all right. The really important part is pretty much back here where your receiver is. If that um, goes in straight and square, the rest of your gun will follow right along. Okay, next, yeah, I mentioned this being a plane, and it is treated much like one. Uh, you tend to use this on the outside of a curve. If I was um, on the outside, you can come in. Oh, I guess I need to show you how to set one of these up. First of all, the bevel goes down, if you can see that. To sit it on whatever surface is handy, tighten the screws down, and you're going to notice it's probably a little on um, the not much of a drag on it, and you want to actually remove a little bit more wood. Well, it's real scientific. Give it a little tap from this side, a little tap that side, and now it really goes at it. This maple. It's difficult stuff to work with, and in a moment it'll start chattering. Ah, there we go. Okay, you can hear the chatter going on along there. Now, that's not a very good thing to do. It's a real easy remedy. Instead of going like this, turn a little bit at an angle, and you can. It will almost immediately stop all the fuss and bother. And this is actually a lot more controllable. You can do corners, edges, and further on, as I'm making the gun stock, you'll see me use this a lot on the outside surfaces.